Hey guys, welcome to the seventh C Sharp tutorial that I'm making for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, we're going to continue looking at if statements. So all you're going to need for this tutorial is a button and a checkbox. And once you have both of these on your form, just go ahead and double click on the button. Alright, so in the previous tutorial, we learned how to set up an if statement. So let's just create an if statement checking to see if the user checked the checkbox. So we're going to say if and then checkbox1, so for our checkbox. And then we're going to want to see if the checked property is equal to true. And the checked property is basically just a bool indicating whether the user has checked the checkbox. And then we're going to say if checkbox1.check equals true, then we're just going to have a message box show saying the checkbox is checked. So message box show. And then we're just going to say right here, the check box is checked. Alright, so let's just go ahead and debug and see if this works. Alright, so currently the checkbox isn't checked. So when we click this button, we shouldn't get a message box. But when we do check this checkbox, we should because if checkbox one dot checked equals true, well it's checked, so then we're gonna get that message box. Yep. Alright, and there's actually an easier way of writing this. So since this is a bool, we can just go ahead and delete this equal equals true. And Doing this, just if checkbox one dot checked, is the same as saying if checkbox one dot checked equal equals true. So let's just go ahead and debug and see if it works the same. So currently the checkbox isn't checked, so we shouldn't get this message box when we click the button. Nope, but when we do check the checkbox and click the button, we should get a message box saying the checkbox is checked. Because if the checkbox is checked, then we'll get a message box saying the checkbox is checked. All right. Well, what if you wanted to say if checkbox one dot check equals false? Well, what you can do is just put um, an exclamation point right at the beginning, and this is the exact same as saying if checkbox one dot check equals false. So, since the checkbox isn't checked at the moment, we should get a message box. Yep. If the checkbox is checked, then we won't get a message box because if checkbox one isn't checked then we're going to get a message box, but if it is checked, then we won't. Alright, and you can do this with any bool. So if we were to go ahead right here and just create um, our own bool, let's call it bool my bool and set it equal to true. So we can just say if and then my bool, then we're just going to have a message box show saying true. So we're just going to say right here, uh, my bool is true. Alright, so if my bool is true, and this is just the same thing as saying if my bool equals true, then we're going to get a message box. And since my bool is equal to true, then we're going to get a message box. Yep. But if we wanted to check to see if my bool is equal to false, we would just put an exclamation point right before my bool right there. So this is just saying if my bool equals false, then we just want to get a message box saying my bool is false. Alright, so let's just go ahead and debug and see if this works. And yep, since my bool isn't false, it's equal to true, then we didn't get that message box. But if we were to go back here and set my bool equal to false, then we'll get that message box. Yep, alright, perfect. Okay, and a few more things here I'm going to show you is dealing with integers. So let's just go ahead right here and create a few integers. So int um, i equals 3, int b equals um, 6, and int c equals 0. Alright, so let's just go ahead here and create a couple if statements, checking to see which is greater than the other. So we can just go ahead right here and say if i is greater than c, then we'll just have a message box show saying i is greater than c. So we'll say i is greater than c. Alright, so basically what this is doing here is it's checking to see if integer i is greater than um, integer c. And since i is equal to 3, is 3 greater than 0? Yes it is. So we're going to get a message box saying i is greater than c. Yep, i is greater than c. And you could just put a number here if you wanted to. So if we wanted to see if i is greater than 2, is i greater than 2? Well, yes it is, so we're going to get a message box. If we put, is i greater than 6? No, it's not, so we're, going, so we're not going to get a message box. 
And we could also do less than. So is i less than 6? Yes, it is. So now we're going to get a message box. Yep. And we could compare other integers as well. So if we wanted to say is i less than b, and since b is equal to 6, we'll get this message box. Yep, perfect. All right, and there's also something called um, less than or equal to. So if we were to just put an equal sign here, it's the same saying, it's the same as saying, if i is less than or equal to b, then we'll get a message box. So if we just debug here, is i less than or um, equal to b? Yes, it is. But b is equal to 6. So if we were to just put a 6 here, we'd say, if 6 is less than or equal to b, then we should get a message box. And since 6 is equal to b, we'll get a message box. Yep. But if we were to just do regular, is 6 less than b? No, it's not, because they're the same. Yeah, we won't get a message box. And you can also do um, greater than or equal to. So is 6 greater than or equal to b? Well, it's equal to b, so we should get a message box. Yep, and if we were to put like 100 here, is 100 greater than or equal to b? Well, 100 is greater than 6, so we're going to get a message box. Alright, so those are pretty simple. There's not really much explaining to do on those, but that's pretty much it for this tutorial. So, see you guys.